I was actually writing the book as part of my PhD dissertation at Australian National University. I did the PhD in Literature, Screen, and Theatre Studies. The exact title of my thesis was Migrations and Mediations, the title of my book, which was largely about the emergence of Southeast Asian writers in Australia from the lifting of the White Australia policy, because prior to 1972, there were no, um, or there were colored people in Australia, but they were not allowed uh, to, most, most colored people were not accepted to migrate in Australia. And then up to, so the, 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 the time frame was 1972 to 2007, uh, the third year, the third term of Prime Minister John Howard, who at that time was bringing back conditions uh, that were there before white Australian policy was lifted. It's like the white-centeredness uh, political agenda was being put into the, uh, into the fore. So, so basically I did that. Originally I was supposed to work on Philippine uh, writers in Australia and then I, w I was told that uh, you have to expand because there may be a very thin, very, very thin um, uh, material can find on the subject. So I said, why not Southeast Asia? I wasn't sure if I would be able to find it. And ultimately, uh, I was given additional grant for field work. I was able to travel across Southeast Asia and Australia. And I was able to complete the project. I was able to finish my PhD in two years, 11 months, which is quite a record. I think people were not aware that there were writings by Filipinos and other Southeast Asians in Australia. That's one of the major things that, that I was trying to put forward. I wanted people to know that there were Southeast Asians in Australia and there were artists, scholars, and other professionals who actually wrote about their experiences. And I was able to, uh, as part of, aside from my dissertation, all chapters of my book had been published in different books and journals. And then uh, the, the PhD project also produced two other books. Uh, one is called From the Editors, which is an anthology of Southeast Asian writers in Australia, uh, nonfiction. And then the other one is the first ever anthology of Filipinos in Australia called Salo Salo. Both were launched in Sydney Writers Festival. Um, From the Editors was launched in 2007. Salo Salo was actually launched in Sydney Writers Festival 2008. So I returned to Australia twice to launch the books. And uh, it was a very happy experience overall because despite the difficulties in coming up with the book, I felt that I was able to contribute new knowledge, especially because a lot of Filipinos are more familiar with America uh, and Europe we have very little engagement with Australia, despite the fact that Australia is very close to the Philippines. And then the other thing that I realized at the end of my book project was that um, people should also realize that um, although Australia is not very far from the Philippines, uh, we know very little about it. There's too much centeredness on America-related studies or European-related studies. And uh, among our neighbors, uh, we, we know more about Japan sometimes, more than our Southeast Asian neighbors and our Australian neighbors. I think the third thing that, that I felt that people uh, should, should, should know about uh, my book was that um, it was very difficult to write the book. And the biggest challenge was to write it without any jargon. In PhD or in graduate studies, there's a tendency for scholars to write with heavy jargon in it. And my advisors challenged me to write with clarity and conviction, to write without any jargon. It has to be clean, non-fiction. It should be read like a scholarly text, but it should not contain very difficult words. And it was quite a struggle. I think one of the main goals that I wanted in the book was for people to realize that we started a long creative writing tradition outside America. People think that uh, Singapore is the center of creative writing in Southeast Asia. 
without realizing that uh, as early as 1928 to 1931, um, an Australian named Tom Inglismore studied in Oxford and went to Iowa to teach. And um, at the time when Iowa was developing a BA, a bachelor's, a master's, and a doctorate program in creative writing. And when that happened, he returned to the Philippines. Rather, he went to the Philippines to teach in UP. He was an associate. He was an associate professor in UP, and he was able to um, introduce the workshop method in creative writing, the way it was being done in Australia. And people do not realize that we were being published in mainstream publications in the states during the 1930s, 40s, 50s. And uh, there was a chapter in my book where I tried to do a little bit of literary history and talked about long before uh, Filipinos started writing in Australia, we actually had a very long tradition of creative writing in the Philippines by way of Tom Inglismore, who came all the way from Australia, went to England, went to Iowa, then went to the Philippines. It was an amazing experience because, as I said earlier, I was given hefty amount of, of, of money. I didn't just get a scholarship for my tuition and my stipend. I got a substantial uh, amount from the Australian government. I was able to travel across Australia. I went to, um, I was a visiting scholar at the National University of Singapore, at the University of Sydney, University of Melbourne, University of Queensland, and University of Western Australia. Uh, I was able to uncover a lot of archival documents. I met a lot of writers and mentors from Southeast Asia and Australia who paved the way for all the Southeast Asian writers in Australia to be able to write and get published in Australia. Um, unfortunately, I discovered that many of the people I interviewed actually passed away. One that is Bruce Bennett, who along with national artist Epsinio started the biennial conference between Australia and Southeast Asian countries during as far back as the 60s and 70s and those conferences are still ongoing to this very day. Um, th there were a lot of people, Dennis Haskell, a fabulous poet from, from, from Australia, who eventually was published by UP Press. Uh, I was able to meet a lot of wonderful writers, not just from the Philippines, like you know, the Philippines Marina Bobbies, Cesar Aguila, um, so many of them, but there were writers from from Vietnam, from from Indonesia, from Malaysia, Singapore, who adopted Australia as their as their home, and and uh, I felt that these experiences made me realize that it's a big world outside the Philippines. There is a tendency for us sometimes to be too parochial. Sometimes inisip na kaya tayo lang yung magaling. Uh, we realize that although marami magagaling dito, marami rin magagaling na Australians at marami magagaling na, na mga writers galing sa ibang mga Southeast Asian countries. I think uh, I tried to make it as clear as possible. In fact, one of the reviewers, national, who turned out to be, at the time he didn't know it was him, and he didn't know it was me, who wrote the text, national artist Mimino Lubera was selected by Australian National University to be one of my reviewers. At the time, he didn't know he was the one that they selected. And uh, he made several interesting comments, including the, uh, a paragraph on how in this day and age, most PhD dissertations have too much inaccessibility in them. Uh, it's very difficult to understand because of all these very difficult technical words that scholars tend to introduce. And uh, he felt that the collection, uh, while it was a doctoral dissertation, was able to make the subject more accessible to a larger audience because of the, the, the way it was written, the fact that it was written without any jargon. Uh, it reads like nonfiction, and it was a struggle doing that. Um, my first draft, which I finished in a year, was trashed by the panel because it sounded like Neil Garcia, it sounded like uh, Beatrice Spiva, it sounded like Priscilla Legasto, and they felt that that wasn't my personality. They said, you have to bring in your own personality into your work. So I decided to write like myself. <laughs>
to write the way I talk to my friends, to write the way I deal with people every day. And apparently, it was the uniqueness of that voice that enabled them to approve the final draft of my dissertations. And that's how it evolved, and that's the version that you can see in the, in the book. I think there was one question that I wanted people to ask me, why there was too much emphasis on the Philippines in some parts of um, the, or many parts of the book really. It's because uh, sometimes the role of the Philippines, the Philippines not being a highly developed country in terms of economy, is sometimes subsumed or marginalized in studies on or about literature and culture. Uh, because Singapore, for instance, and Malaysia, and Thailand, and even Indonesia, to a certain extent, have the financial and political clout to promote their respective cultural products. It's a lot easier for them to promote their writers. And in the case of the Philippines, while we view our writers with so much esteem, so much respect, we also realize that when we go outside the Philippines, people are not really interested in our writing or in our, in our writers. It's very difficult to teach them how to listen to us and how to read us, and it's quite a challenge to do that. Uh, partly because we're not politically strong enough to promote our own cultural products. We are not interesting enough for some of the readers in different parts of the world. And uh, culturally, we're quite different vis-a-vis -vis other Asian, Southeast Asian countries. Most Southeast Asian countries have very strong links to India or China or Japan or Korea. Even in terms of our pop, our pop culture is American. Uh, the rest of Southeast Asia have strong links to China or India. So those are big differences. I would hope that, that, that I'll be able to explain to some people why I had to emphasize that there was so much work being done in the Philippines the subject of literature and creative writing, and many of these efforts have been forgotten. In fact, uh, I uncovered along the way anthologies of literature dating back to the 1950s where there are many Filipino writers in it. Australian writers were obviously there, but they published Nick Joaquin, MVM Gonzalez, Edith Tiempo, F.C. Neil Jose, uh, Jose Garcia Villa, long before they became national artists. By sheer coincidence, they were in these anthologies, and um, at that point, I realized that there was something going on in my dissertation. It wasn't just a dissertation, it was meant to be published as a book, so that people will realize that there were a lot of things happening, not only actually in the Philippines, but in, 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 in different Southeast Asian countries, and eventually the way they emerged in Australia as one main body of works. I think they should start from chapter one. <laughs> they should read the, the the first two chapters. I try to contextualize the history of Australia for non-Australians to to recapitulate more or less what was going on, why I ended up doing the project, and then the second chapter to work very hard on the literary traditions in the places where these writers came from. And there was a strong slant on the literary tradition in the Philippines because I argued that. Uh, after America invented creative writing as a discipline, it was in the Philippines where the first creative writing tradition, the way we know it today, emerged. Uh, long before they started writing in Singapore or in Malaysia or even in Australia. In fact, the very first book of poetry in English in Australia, in, 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 in Singapore and Malaysia was written by Wang Gong, who is now a famous historian, economic historian and emeritus professor. He was the head of the University of Hong Kong and uh, director of the, the Dean of the Research School of Pacific Nation Studies of Australian National University and he was head of the University of Hong Kong and he was also uh, at some point with the University of Malaya. But he was the first poet to publish a book of, of poems in English in Malaysian Singapore. But he said to me, that writers from all over Southeast Asia and East Asia would go to the Philippines to study creative writing under NVM Gonzalez. In fact, he attended a creative writing workshop in the Philippines 
where his classmates included the likes of Virginia Moreno and Vian Gonzalez was the teacher. And um, so during the 50s and the 60s and the 70s, a lot of our Asian neighbors would bring their writers to the Philippines so they can learn a bit more about writing. We're quite, I wouldn't say advanced, but in terms of technique, the way we know literature as it is, in terms of the breadth and scope of what we know, uh, we were quite advanced. And I was hoping that people would be able to, uh, to, to remember that, that the, the Philippines is not a pushover as far as literature is concerned. And we have many wonderful writers, and we have many wonderful traditions. And this is what the Filipino writers in Australia, the Filipino Australians, were bringing into their writings. And that was what they were bringing in, and what was they were contributing to uh, Australia when they decided to migrate in Australia. Similarly, uh, writers from the other countries who emerged in Australia we're doing the same thing. So I was hoping all these things will be understood by uh, that people who will be reading the book. Southeast Asian diaspora writers emerged in Australia from 1972 when multiculturalism became a federal policy under Prime Minister Go Whitlam to 2007, initially because alignments and associations between the region and Australia had already existed prior to this period. Consequently, 1972 represents a crucial watershed in Australian history as the country was to be a white nation no more. Afterward, writers of the diaspora received further encouragement from creative writing mentors and programs in both their home region and the continent, progressive academic, commercial, and literary publishers, state and privately funded awards grants and fellowships, as well as community-based journals and other initiatives by Southeast Asian communities in Australia.